For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. In the aftermath of the news of the Omicron variant emerging, the first response by many countries in the global north was to impose travel bans on southern African nations. Travel restrictions were even imposed on countries where cases of Omicron had not been detected. At the same time, countries in the global north where such cases were detected did not face such restrictions. This racist bias has led to fresh discussions on the nature of travel restrictions. How do we understand these travel restrictions during recent times and over the past year? Jyotsna Singh of the People's Health Movement explains. Uh, so let's begin with Omicron first. Uh, as we know that as soon as South Africa declared that they have detected a new variant which uh, came to be known as Omicron, uh, uh, so many countries from Southern Africa uh, saw travel bans being imposed on them from rich countries from the Western nations, US, uh, European Union, Germany, and all of these countries. Now, uh, that was a very, very problematic uh, response because South Africa, uh, in very good faith, and thanks to their uh, HIV uh, AIDS uh, research that has gone into their, uh, uh, you know, building up of the health system over the last so many decades, it is because of all those systems that they were able to detect a new variant. It wasn't first found in South Africa. It was South Africans who detected it and told the world that there is a new variant. Um, so in one sense, this becomes like a discouragement to the countries and the scientists to report uh, what is happening in their country. Though this is something which is very important as we know for the world, because later we found so many countries actually had that variant, be it Australia, be it Germany, be it UK, US, Canada, it had spread everywhere. Um, so, so this kind of a treatment that the South African countries, Southern African countries went through was very problematic. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, just even, uh, I mean, belying all logic, many countries who are from South, uh, Southern Africa, uh, even if they did not detect any Omicron variant, they were barred, uh, the, all the travels uh, uh, from those countries were banned to the richer nations. And many countries which had Omicron, which uh, it had been detected, they did not face the same ban. So there's this kind of racism, uh, acute racism that we've seen uh, over the past uh, one year, two years, not just in the case of Omicron, but uh, to be able to immediately ban flights and uh, uh, you know border closures is another thing that happens. Those kind of things which we have seen and it the kind of racism it shows, we have, it just, uh, I think, COVID-19 and the whole uh, a public health measure with, of travel ban and border closures has shown us that kind of a thing. Now, um, uh, so this is, uh, I, I'm saying just uh, Omicron has uh, in that context, but uh, what also happens is travel ban and border closures are uh, a known public health measure because whenever there is a spread of infectious disease, you need to stop that spread. So we saw in the case of Ebola a few years ago, we saw during the 1918 uh, uh, flu, uh, uh, how in, from certain parts uh, of the world, certain countries had stopped people um, uh, traveling from there to their own countries. It actually happened during the cholera outbreak of the 19th century also. So this is not a new thing. Um, but what uh, before COVID-19, at most 25% of the countries would impose a ban at the same time. Uh, in COVID-19, we've seen that almost all of them has, have done it. So this public health measure has actually come uh, to be known uh, as, uh, I mean, travel bans have become the way of responding to COVID-19, one of the major ways. And that needs to be looked at because we do not have sufficient evidence about it. We do not know uh, whether uh, it is the best measure or not. Do we have alternatives or not to look into? None of that has been investigated into. So um, um, I think what last two years have shown us that we have created a particular public health, health response as if it is the it can be the response um, to stop the spread of the virus. Um, however, we have not investigated into it at all. We do not have evidence to support it. We do not know whether there are other measures which can be very effective, um, as effective or maybe more effective.
Um, so all of those things need to be looked at too. How do key players such as the World Health Organization evaluate and analyze the travel bans? What do experts recommend when it comes to the use of travel restrictions as public health measures? Who are the people who are impacted the most during such restrictions and how are they affected? Jyotsna analyzes. Health organizations, international health regulations, IHR, uh, they were framed uh, in 2005. And um, we see they specifically mention that uh, um, you can own, uh, the countries should impose travel restrictions or border closures only if there are no reasonable available alternatives there with them. Um, so this is a very clear uh, 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 commitment that the countries have to make, all those who have signed IHR and most of the countries are signatories to IHR 2005. Um, and the reason being because, uh, as you have correctly mentioned, that the vulnerable sections get affected the most. We are not talking about tourism here, um, even though we realize that how economies can be affected by that. But say, uh, for example, if Singapore restricts people's movement from Malaysia, uh, then uh, it shares the border with them. And a lot of daily wage laborers travel from Malaysia to Singapore every day to just earn their living. You stop that kind of um, uh, a movement, you stop movement of refugees or you make it more difficult to for refugees uh, uh, and they're actually running away from ethnic conflict, they're running away from death to say the least, you stop their uh, movement and you do not let them uh, enter safer spaces and countries. So uh, these restrictions have far reaching um, consequences for um, the poorer sections and vulnerable populations. Uh, I can give you an example from India. Uh, in India, they, uh, the travel restriction was not only from other countries, but within different provinces, it had stopped. And there was like a curfew-like situation and uh, migrant laborers, they could not travel back home at that point of time, which was such a problem because, um, I mean, it is no wonder that India is really losing out on uh, its hunger uh, uh, in terms of hunger in the global hunger index, because apart from the other policies in the past two years, the way we have treated the migrant laborers is um, and not letting them move, which is very important for them to earn daily living or go back home when they do not have uh, any employment or job opportunity in the city where uh, they came looking for it. Um, that has created major devastations. Um, and therefore, we really need to uh, find evidence that the work has to be done in creating evidence. Uh, investigations need to be done. A proper policy mechanism has to be established, uh, which can tell us uh, how to go about travel bans and border closures, if at all. Uh, what can co constitute those uh, measures, those kind of details? Who are the people who you cannot say that they should not be uh, uh, traveling at all? And if uh, in worst case scenario, these have to be imposed, then who? Um, how do you help those populations so, who get affected the most? Um, and in fact, when we talk about it, uh, uh, if for certain pop, if I, uh, I mean, if you, I, the kind of measures which were there at the airports is so different than the measures that were put in place where people were traveling by, say, local buses. A clear class difference that we saw in that uh, manner. Um, so you have to, if you are saying that you will test people and if they test negative for COVID, they can enter the border. Uh, and they can enter the country or a province, then it has to be applicable for everyone. And those measures should be made free of cost and available to everyone. A migrant laborer cannot afford RT-PCR uh, in India initially, which was costing up to 5,000, then came down to cheaper. It is it's still rupees 700 right now. Um, uh, so uh, you cannot expect migrant laborers to get themselves tested. You have to make create those facilities where they test free of cost and then they cross and they go. Uh, so will, should be the case with refugees uh, and many other vulnerable populations. Um, and I think if we properly work on these measures, this is what will uh, it will come to. And let us not forget that all these measures are ultimately part of the larger global policy response to a pandemic of this nature. Uh, so why do we have Omicron? I, enough of scientists have come out and uh, in open and have said it is because 
the African continent does not have enough vaccines. Uh, African continent has not been able to vaccinate more than 10% of its population, though that is reaching above 60% in all the other continents uh, if we look at the average. Um, so if you let the monopoly of big pharmaceutical companies continue uh, and do not let uh, vaccines reach everyone, this is what you will have. Um, so had vaccines reached, uh, 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 to everyone on this planet, which uh, was quite possible, uh, then probably we would not have had this spread and then we would not have imposed travel restrictions, uh, something that actually initially caused a lot of uh, panic in South Africa because they thought they will not get enough reagents um, for uh, uh, their uh, testing and uh, for uh, other measures. Um, so, uh, so when WHO is saying that you can have, uh, you need to have other alternates, if they don't exist, only then uh, impose travel ban or border closures. We have to look at it at a global level, international level. We have to see how the pharmaceutical companies have benefited from the pandemic. They've made a killing um, and not let that happen. So because the alternates are possible and you don't have to uh, go for such sharp and harsh measures, um, which actually start to impact people's living and uh, impact their economics. Thank you. Thank you.